Are you looking to make your architectural and technical drawings stand out with clarity and depth? With automated depth viewing, you gain the power to adjust line weights, tonal values, and pixel transparency based on objects distance in both hidden line and shaded viewports. This removes the need for manual adjustments, giving you crisper, more legible drawings that convey spatial depth and emphasis, saving you time meeting office or industry drawing standards and elevating every presentation. In this video, you'll learn how to apply line weight scaling, line fading, and advanced controls to create visually rich drawings that communicate depth and hierarchy directly from your 3D models. Depth queuing lets you adjust line weights based on how far objects are from the viewer. This mimics traditional drawing techniques where closer objects are drawn with heavier lines and distant objects with lighter ones. In order to use depth queuing, first you create a viewport of your 3D model on a sheet layer. For the most impactful effects, use a standard viewport for author or perspective views, section viewports for section elevation drawings, an interior elevation viewport for interior elevations. These viewports must utilize either a hidden line or shaded rendering. You can even take advantage of background and foreground rendering settings to use both rendering styles. Let's start with hidden line section viewport. In the object info palette of the viewport, click the background render settings button and navigate to the depth queue and tab. You can create depth in your drawing by adjusting line fading, line thickness, or a combination of both. Let's start with line thickness. When you check the line thickness box, you will have the option to choose either scaled line thickness or fixed thickness. Scaled line thickness is best when you want to maintain a hierarchy of line thicknesses by object type. To set the line scale thickness range, there is a gradient style slider bar at the top of the dialog with near and far markers. The left marker at the zero position represents the starting point of the drawing, and the right marker at the one position represents the back of the model or the extents of the viewport. Click the left marker, then move the scaled line thickness slider to a much higher percentage, up to 200%. Next, activate the right marker and set the percentage much lower. This will create a subtle depth effect without losing the legibility of your existing line weights. When you first apply depth cue into a viewport, you need to update it to see the changes, but subsequent edits update instantly. Fixed thickness overrides all line weights, but respects viewport line weight scaling. Use fixed thickness if you want to emphasize the depth of your drawing instead of individual line weights. To edit the fixed thickness range, activate the left or near marker and specify a thick line weight. Activate the right or far marker and specify a thinner line weight. You will see a tapered preview at the top of the dialog. Line fading allows you to fade the original line color to convey depth, where 100% represents the original line color and 0% is white. This subtle effect goes beyond traditional drafting techniques providing an additional or alternative style. To use this feature, check the box for line fading and the tone percentage slider will now be editable. Set the tone range in the same way that you set scaled line thickness. Activate the right marker and then lower the tone percentage. If you set the tone percentage to zero, then the farthest lines will be white. Let's see the effect of line fading when we update the viewport. If the effect seems too subtle or doesn't match your expectations, check the extent of your model. Depth queuing considers the entire model, so empty space behind your building can reduce the effect. You have two ways to solve this. One option is to adjust the far marker on the slider so it lands somewhere in the middle. This slider represents the full extent of your model, so the line thickness and line fading ranges will now only apply to the near section of your model. The other option is to change the depth of the viewport. For a section viewport, in the object info palette, navigate to the advanced properties button. Within the dialog, click on the extents tab and check the extents beyond cut plane section. If it is set to infinite, then the range of the viewport extends to the outer bounds of the model. 
If this distance is much farther than what we can see in the viewport, depth queuing will not look as expected. An easy remedy is to select finite depth and give a distance value. After setting the extent of the viewport, if you wish to align the depth to a specific point in your model, navigate to the section line instance of your viewport and adjust it manually. With an interior elevation viewport, use the Navigate to Interior Elevation button in the Object Info palette to edit the interior elevation marker directly. To edit the extents of all connected interior elevation viewports simultaneously, double click on the interior elevation marker. Alternatively, use the Clip Cube extents to focus the range. Double click on the viewport to open the Edit Viewport dialog. Choose Design Layer. Check Display with Clip Cube and click OK. Adjust the Clip Cube in the design layer to tightly frame your building, then update your viewport. These adjustments allow depth queuing to respond only to the relevant parts of your model. Surface hatches are adjusted in the same manner as scaled line thickness. Setting the near marker below 100% and the far marker even lower allows object edges to pop and hatch lines to still fade appropriately with distance. For 3D views, enable tapering to make lines gradually thinner as they recede into the distance. This is especially noticeable on long lines running away from the viewer. When tapering is not enabled, a line that is not parallel to the viewer will have a line weight that is an average of its nearest and farthest values. Likewise, with line fading, a non-parallel line will show as an average of its near and far tones. Enable the smoothing option to blend fading smoothly. These two features create a more natural, visually pleasing effect, but they may require more computing power. Depth queuing isn't limited to hidden line views. In a shaded render mode, it applies transparency to objects based on distance. In the shaded render settings of a viewport, Navigate to the Depth Queuing tab and check Enable Depth Queuing. Adjust the opacity for the near and far positions. Distant elements become more transparent, subtly enhancing the sense of depth in your shaded views. This transparency is applied to colors, textures and edges. To combine hidden line and shaded depth queuing in a single viewport, set the foreground rendering to hidden line and the background rendering to shaded. Since depth queuing for shaded rendering displays through transparency, it's possible to take advantage of this and apply a fill attribute to the viewport. The fill color will blend with the model, producing unique visual results. Experiment with these settings to achieve the style that best suits your presentation needs. Now that you've learned how to use depth queuing in Vectorworks to control line weights, fading and transparency, you have the tools to make your drawings clearer and more expressive. For more information, please check out the Vectorworks University, Online Help or the Vectorworks AI Assistant and Design Without Limits.